head coach Cassie Churnside said that it's difficult to recruit players to the Midwest. And we are off here in Councilman Billingsley Aquatic Center. It's a good early block from IU there. Ava Morant. Quick free throw so far. Morant gets it stolen there, and that's the type of defense that the Hoosiers want to give. Catherine Hawkins almost had a chance there, but Alex Brown snatched that ball away from her. Utasi. Well, Utasi is by far Michigan's best player. 60 goals on the season, and the Hoosiers are going to need to limit her production. Moran trying to find someone. A whistle is called. Firing it into the goal off the post. Mary Askew has possession of the ball. Well, you see some very physical defense being played. IU needs to do that to slow down this first period attack, which has been very prolific for the Wolverines. Crouch and was on back and forth. Crouch firing into the goal, yes! That's first goal on the board, Indiana Hoosiers. That's a great start for IU. Zoe Crouch now moves into sole possession of the team's leading goals. That is her 34th on the season. Indiana up on the board first, hopefully going to spark some momentum for them. We saw in the replay there, goalkeeper Alex Brown got a piece, but not enough to keep it out. See you early. Morant fires it in, no good again. Great save there by Askew. Wazan treading water. Wazan has been such a solid part of this team, a dual threat player. Over to White. White fires it, but out of bounds. So far, this IU counterattack has been very, very good. Michigan looks a little caught off guard by this attack for IU. Alex Brown tries to Hail Mary it down there but no good. White. And Greenslade. A goal there, 2-0 for Indiana. And here it is again, that stifling defense. It's been so good for IU. Michigan, a good opportunity there, but no good. Stolen away from the Wolverines, an easy goal for Michigan as they are now on the board. Well, that was Izzy Jackson, a freshman from New Zealand. And that's the type of mistake that IU wants to not make. Just stolen away from the goalkeep from the goalie Askew. And then it was just an easy finish for Jackson in front. Into the inside, that's Jackson. Izzy Jackson on the board. That was Sol Lee who scored that goal. Firing it in. Yes, that is Kata Utasi this time. 
and that is the player that Michigan wants to rely on. She is so physical in there, 60 goals coming in. That is her 61st of the year, and she's just a powerhouse. Look at how much power she gets from this shot. The Hungarian. Quick substitution as Brooke Ingram comes in for Izzy Jackson for the Michigan Wolverines. Well, head coach Cassie Churnside wants to be making a lot of these changes. So much depth in the Michigan team. She wants to keep IU off balance. Ask you, find Sasser. Kid. Kid trying to find an opportunity inside. And a goal there for Sophia Soli. That's her second of the match. Well, the exact same type of goal. They just feed her inside. It's sort of like with basketball players where they try to get them posted up by the basket. And she just did it again. Well, that's the goal of the game. Get it as close to the goal as possible and just try to get it past the goalie. Well, Soli has been so good so far. She. She is so physical in there, Sophia Soli. Number two. Like many of these players, she is from California, a sophomore. The Indiana defense has just been excruciating so far. It seems like Michigan can't even get inside. It's it's so great for Indiana to start off this way. As I mentioned before, so many goals to start games for Michigan, and they are limiting their offensive productivity there. And they're trying to get inside again, but I think the Michigan defense has caught on to their tactic. O'Neal across. O'Neal saved there again by Mary Askew. Well, it was no secret coming in that Michigan was going to control the time of possession, but it was how IU was going to counterattack. They're doing that very well. Mary Askew is on her game right now, and IU now has possession with a chance to increase the lead. Was on over to Crouch. Crouch fires it in. Yes! And Walsh at the midpoint. Excuse me, Brown at the midpoint. And that's an impediment, but I think that's a good impediment. Gets Michigan to sort of come out again and slow their pace down. They want to move fast, the Wolverines, but IU is playing physical and not allowing them to do so. Oh, we got a breakaway. Off the post, wow. An unfortunate miss there. Wow, By Alex Grace Klingler. Alex Brown got a piece of that. We'll see if it crossed the line here. No, it did not. Just in front. That's a great save from a very solid goalkeeper in Alex Brown. A little aggression there. Wolverines with an opportunity here. Firing it in, and there it is. Three on the board for Michigan. That time was Sophie Tovani. Tovani has also been a very good goal scorer. 14 on the season. Ask you got a piece, but just couldn't keep it out. We've said that a few times today so far. Defense. 
Crouch, the senior, that we are keeping our spotlight on to Wazan over inside. And there it is. Another goal there. This time was Grace Klingler again. Very impressive, a freshman amongst seniors out there as Michigan fires it in. Mary Askew says absolutely not. Askew started this game off very well. Her movement around the goal has been good and the Michigan players just cannot find any openings to put the ball past her. Here's Crouch. And a stoppage here in the match. Talk to me, Zeke. What has been standing out to you so far this match? Well, Mary Askew has looked good, and IU is sticking to the game plan of finding their best players, Klingler, Crouch, and Greensdale. And Crouch retrieving the ball, who finds Downs down over to the inside. Trying to get it to Soli there, but Michigan says no, and the ball sails. It looks like Michigan did not see that ball. That was Alice McGeest, who was already ahead of the game there. She was ready to fire the ball. And a half court heave, half, half, what would you call that in terms of swimming? I guess a half pool heave. Half pool heave. And as we are off, in the second quarter, Michigan has possession. Well, the game plan has stayed the same for Indiana. Pressure, 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 and they're doing it right now again. That's Morant throwing it over the head of her fellow Wolverine, regaining possession. That's Morant firing it in, and saved again by Mary Askew. Unbelievable. Askew is playing so well right now in water polo that is such a difficult save to move to the side like that. You don't have much leverage, but Askew made it work, and there it is again with the amazing saves from her. And that's Lana Debo trying to find an opportunity. Throws it away, a turnover there for Debo. An unfortunate sequence there for the Hoosiers. It's one of the rare mistakes IU has had on offense. Careless in possession. Turnover there for the Wolverines. Indiana gains possession. And seems to be a miscommunication there. Indiana and Michigan are debating who's gonna get the ball and it looks like it's gonna be the Hoosiers. As Zoe Crouch has possession of the water polo ball. Yeah, this has been a physical game. That's why all the whistles are being blown. Players making contact with each other. Here's the pass up to Debo. Debo over to Wazan. Excuse me, that is White. That's Crouch firing it in. Missing it there, unfortunate for the Indiana Hoosiers. Well, although it's a miss there, that is what IU wants. Get it to your best player and have her shoot. Eventually it'll go in. Oh, she was impeded against very close to goal. A mistake there for the Wolverines. 
and a bad mistake as you are down two points in the second quarter. You can't be making those mistakes here. Seems there's a bit of a discussion to see where the foul occurred. And a penalty there for the Wolverines. The foul seemed to have been on the Hoosiers. Well, in that situation, normally a foul will just be a free throw, but in this case, she was so close to the goal that they had to give a penalty shot. There are no offsides in water polo, mm -hmm. but if the offensive player is behind that back line and is fouled, referee has no choice. And that was Kata Utasi's first goal of the game, so put her on the board. IU has limited Utasi very well so far. That's Wazan. Wazan. Tried to feed into Downs, but an error there seems to be on the Hoosiers. IU seems to be a little careless right now, looks to be letting go of possession too easily. The Indiana Hoosiers started off hot in the first quarter, but seem to be lacking a little bit here in the second. I expect a timeout to talk it over, as we've seen no goals so far for the Hoosiers and one for the Wolverines. Well, in games that IU has lost, it has come down to offense. the offense slowing down. They've lost a lot of close matches like that. Here's Downs. Was on back to Downs, was on and Downs passing it back and forth. Was on, Downs, was on. <laughs> Unbelievable, back and forth. That was Downs attempting to get it into the goal. off the right side of the post. Well, IU is doing very well with those cross pool passes, but Michigan seems to have cut off the passing lanes and is forcing IU to go to these short passes, which the goalie is easily able to track. Lots of whistles going on here, and another turnover on the Wolverines. Indiana will gain possession, and I really, would think that Indiana would do something here because they started off hot and now they have the momentum in their hands. It's gonna be important for them to, if they don't score, get a shot on target. Put some more pressure back on Michigan. Inside and that's the place they wanted to go but unfortunate there. It's Izzy Jackson, excuse me, that is Sophia Soli. Well, we saw Soli do that move a few times down low. This time it didn't work. She seemed to spike it into the pool instead of whip it in. And a fire into the goal, blocked by the Hoosiers. Not fast enough there. The speed on that ball could have been a lot faster, especially seeing the distance from the goal. Well, they were trying to find Alsom Geist. Just couldn't get the ball to her, and Askew came out well. And an inside pass, but mobbed by three Wolverines. That seems to be Sophia Soli's place to be inside near the goal. And that on the number 16 of the Well, IU is gonna need all of Freddie's magic here. And the Wolverines passing it around. Some good team chemistry here. Lots of ball movement. Passing is so clinical for Michigan. That's and an unbelievable, unbelievable Could not possession. have drawn it up better myself as Michigan is on the board. Tie game here. That was Elise Walker. That was great team chemistry. And you saw it at the beginning of that play. You could see them passing it around, the ball movement was sparking some sort of unbelievable play and it ended just like that. And you know, like we said, Freddie Mercury must have been here in spirit. Well, that is as close to an alley-oop as you're gonna see in a water polo match. IU seems to be letting up a little on the defensive end, which is not where they wanna be against such a good defensive team like Michigan. 
And here's Parnes. Parnes back up to the top. Wrestling for the ball here. We have Skyler Kidd. IU with a man up very quickly right now as a substitution is going to be made. Zoe Crouch passes it away. Michigan gaining possession on that Indiana turnover, and Indiana just hasn't looked the same since the first quarter. Well, that's just a bit of a risky pass. No need for it. Still had time on the shot clock. I think that's just IU pressing a little bit when they don't have to. You'll see the replay here. That's some steal by Michigan, though. One-handed with the left hand. That's impressive, and I, I honestly could confidently say that I could not do that as Michigan tries to fire it in. That's Kata Utasi saved by Mary Askew there. And I feel like I've been saying that a lot, saved by Mary Askew. She's the reason that the uh, Indiana is only tied in this game. Well, she is a great goalie, but she does not want to be left out to dry by the defense. Skyler Kidd tried to throw it in there, and an unfortunate sequence as Indiana turns it over once again. What Michigan is doing on defense, which has been brilliant, is they have ramped up the aggression. They are playing more up top against Indiana so that they can't even start to move their offense. And another save there by Mary Askew. And that was a really impressive one as that ball came in. It seemed like 150 miles an hour. Well, it's a great save, but again, it just comes down to IU maybe not focusing as much, maybe not getting back on defense, putting enough pressure on, but well, Michigan can thank some stifling defense, and they're starting to get into a rhythm on offense, and IU, as I mentioned in the pregame, needs to limit these runs and stop the momentum from changing. Another block there for the Wolverines. And will we see a scoreless second quarter for the Hoosiers? After coming out so hot in the first quarter, I did not expect to see them not score once in the second quarter. But we might be able to witness that right here. That was a great save by Alex Brown. She has been, she had a tough first period, but she settled down well. She has a few good saves in this quarter. And as we just saw Skylar Kidd attempt a goal off the top post, but rebounded by the Hoosiers. Off the post again there by Zoe Crouch, and Indiana just can't have anything come their way. Well, it was another one of those backhand whip shots from in tight, and it's just not going in the back of the net for the Hoosiers right now. Oh, that's a hard foul. It's going to be an exclusion. Look like Debo go out there. That be the first half a lot of opportunities there in the second quarter for the Indiana Hoosiers, but a lot of them went off the post. Unfortunate there, but they had the half to talk it over. We'll see what happens here in the second half. I'm excited. This has been a fun one to watch. It's flying by, because you know what they say, when you're having fun, it flies by. Indeed, both these teams really need these wins Two top 20 teams, whoever wins is going to move up. Michigan passing it around again, and we saw what happened last time. This same sequence happened. It's good aggression there by IU. It looks like personally to me that Michigan has more of a better team chemistry to lay out zone play 
type thing going on than the Indiana Hoosiers. As Indiana kind of has a, uh, you know, rush, uh, quick pace offense rather than Michigan slow, pass it around kind of offense. So. Yeah, and right there, Ava Moran had a great chance in front of goal for the Wolverines. But as we've seen this half, Mary Askew put a stop to that with a great save. There it is again, IU just cannot complete these passes. It looks like they're pressing a little bit and Michigan's taking advantage. And we have yet to see an attempt so far this second half as a fast break opportunity is happening here. And there it is, Michigan starting it off in the second half. That is Aaron Newstrom getting it going for the Wolverines. And it's just a matter of time that happens. It looks like Michigan's the better team so far. Other than the first quarter, Michigan has had the upper hand. IU has been doing a good job of limiting Newstrom, who is on the watch list for player of the year, along with her teammate Utasi. We'll get into more of that later, but IU doing very well against her, but they just couldn't contain her right there. Skyler Kidd. Over to Hathaway, Hathaway. Here's Downs and an attempt by Indiana, no good again. Yeah, she tried to go hard and low there, but the release point on her shot was just way too low. She couldn't get it in. And here's an opportunity for the Wolverines, but excruciating defense there by Grace Hathaway. It's good defense again. Um, they're really trying to limit how much of the ball Newstrom can get. They're doing a pretty good job of it. It looks like the defense was a little too aggressive there as we have a penalty here and good for a two point lead for the Michigan Wolverines. Well, by no means is this game over for Indiana, but they're going to have to really look at themselves right now. Maybe take a timeout, maybe take a break, get everything together because Michigan is turning on the heat with a 4-0 run right now. And you took those words right out of my mouth. 4-0 run for a team that we thought had the upper hand in the first quarter, but it seems like Michigan is just the better team so far. But there is time for Indiana to turn it around. Well, this is now dangerous. Michigan seems to be getting more comfortable. They seem to be getting the ball to Tassi and Newstrom more, and that is dangerous. And here's Indiana off the post again. It seems like the ball is a magnet to the post for the Hoosiers, unfortunately. So tough, but you know, this is a game of inches. IU is doing very well on occasion setting up shots, but they just have to finish the opportunities that they get. Seen a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of poorly aimed shots. And here's a wide open look and she just throws it away. And Allison McGee's comes out of nowhere out of the water, just pops her head out, I didn't even see her. Here's Alice McGee's throwing it in, saved there once again by Mary Askew. Who else? Who else, Who else? indeed? Askew's been so good for IU, keeping them in the game as much as she can. But the offense has got to get going for the Hoosiers right now. And for Michigan, you really have to commend their defense recently, which did not look great in the first period. But since the second, it has been unbelievably solid. And Kingler and Kidd just passing it back and forth. And once again, thrown away. Unfortunate for the Hoosiers, but they gain possession again. And here's Zoe Crouch over to the corner. Up top, back to Crouch. Crouch, Indiana moving the ball around well. Here's Crouch off the post again. Unbelievable. Well, the goal still shaking from that shot. IU, well, we've said it a few times and there really aren't there really isn't anything else you can say. It's just been so unfortunate. That shot is well, well past Alex Brown, but 
The post is the best defender of them all. And the shot just wouldn't go in. I think we can confidently say the post has been the, get, been the best goalie for the Wolverines today. No disrespect to Alex Brown. She's been great, but the majority of the shots have gone off the post. That's good stifling defense down low. Not letting Michigan get set, not letting them force the ball inside. And here's Lana Debo running the pool. There's just another example of IU just trying to do too much and not getting a good enough look. And a great opportunity here as IU is, I'd like to say, in the blue zone. That was very close to a penalty shot right there. Here's Crouch firing it in. There we go. Zoe Crouch. So when she, it's either going to hit the inside of it and go in or hit it too far to the outside and go out, but a lot of respect goes to her. She's still trying to get to that top corner. And Zoe Crouch, the senior that we spotlighted in the beginning of the game, finally getting the Indiana Hoosiers out of their huge slump. And honestly, I'm not surprised that it was Crouch because she's an unbelievable player. She's been unlucky a few times. The last Indiana shot was Crouch's that hit off the bar. She finally gets one to go in, and it's another multi-goal game for her. And Indiana just within one as Michigan fires it way off towards the right as the Hoosiers gain possession. Just about three minutes, now under three minutes to go in the third quarter remaining. Michigan leads by one. Indiana on this possession looking to tie the game at seven apiece. Exclusion, there's an exclusion there by Michigan. IU with a chance to tie it up, man up. Here's Kidd up top. Crouch, no good. A little too much there on the shot. Well, stylistically, it has been obvious that Crouch likes to go high on her shots. We've seen her hit the bar, we've seen her hit the post, we've seen it gone in, but that one maybe trying to do a little too much. And a little disagreement here as both coaches are nearing the referee, and that's never a good sign. Well, I think what IU head coach Taylor McKinnery was saying was that the referee had already called for it to be IU ball and then change the decision. These referee calls starting to go against IU. Maybe a little too aggressive from the Hoosiers. Brooke Ingram firing it. Was Elise Walker no good, but tipped by Mary Askew so the Wolverines will retain possession. I gotta tell you, I think that is one of her best saves today. Got a fingertip to it. That shot was going in the top corner. Absolutely, that ball was coming in hot. And no one was guarding her. As we see Ashley O'Neill. And the ball just sails to nobody land as the Hoosiers have possession. Fast break opportunity here. This is where they want to be. And I, th I think that's a penalty shot. I think that, that was the last man. That will be a penalty there for the Hoosiers. An opportunity here to tie the game at seven apiece. And we've seen every penalty here has gone in. So we're 100% on penalties, although not on the Hoosiers. That is the Wolverines we've seen. So will the Hoosiers add to that penalty field goal percentage? And here's Crouch. Crouch saved there by Alex Brown. What a save. Trying to go center, trying to get Alex Brown to go to either side. But Alex Brown was a little too smart for that one. Well, 
You want high drama in the pool? We got it right here. Time out now. Momentum seemed to be shifting in the Hoosiers' way. They had Crouch at the penalty spot and she just could not put it in. Brown guessed the right way, she saved it. And here's that formation we've seen all game from the Wolverines. IU seems to have dropped back. And what an unbelievable sequence. That formation just seems to work every single time as Aaron Newstrom gets it started after the break for the Wolverines. Wolverines lead by two. It's just so difficult. IU dropped back in an attempt to stop the ball from getting so far down low. But Newstrom is such a physical player that she just got there, put it in. And there's a two goal swing right now. It could have been 7-7 with the penalty make but now it's 8-6 Michigan. And what was more impressive about that sequence was it wasn't even a throw, it was more of a tip. We so like you said before, an alley-oop, that looked like more of an alley-oop than anything we've seen all game. A tip, tip in alley-oop, if anything. You see that a lot with these physical teams, their ability to get it down low and just go up higher than the other team. Michigan's done that on a few occasions. And here's Michi Michigan with a Hail Mary down. We'll see what defensive style IU brings here. And here's Ashley O'Neal. O'Neal fires it in, way off to the left. Hoosiers will gain possession. IU got let off the hook there. I don't know where the defense was. It was non-existent for the Hoosiers. They let O'Neal just waltz her way down low. And as we are just 20 seconds left 20 seconds from the end of the third quarter. Will we see the Indiana Hoosiers spark something here to end the quarter? And you, you would think that the Hoosiers would want something to kind of gain some, some momentum going into the fourth quarter. And there's the attempt blocked there by Alex Brown and that will do it. Well, IU is gonna need to figure something out. They're being outscored five to one since the first quarter. Michigan is starting to really put up the heat on offense, and IU has really seen opportunities slip away. There was the penalty shot from Crouch. They had some shots go off the post. And sorry to stop you here as the Wolverines. What a save there by Mary Askew. Unbelievable. Wow. wow. I thought for sure that was a no doubter, but Mary Askew, oh my Gosh, well, unbelievable save. I've never seen something like that. And not only that, but to have the presence of mind with Izzy Jackson coming right at her for a rebound to just throw that one away. And as we just saw a throw off the post, as we've seen very often this game, Indiana has possession of the ball, looking to trim this lead, trim their deficit, excuse me, to just one. As the ball is thrown away and Indiana regains possession. There it is again, no need to throw it so far down low that quickly. And a very unfortunate opportunity there as Indiana was just inches from the goal, not able to capitalize. And here come the Wolverines. IU drops this game, they will be very frustrated that they did not capitalize on their offensive opportunities. And there is a goal again for the Wolverines to increase their lead to three. Not what the Hoosiers wanted to see at all. As Sammy Monroe gets it going early in the fourth quarter for the Wolverines. It's a great shot from Monroe. She was being contested on that but put it in the bottom right corner. Michigan is starting to run away with this one late in the match. With the way this match has been going, it seems to be yes, they are running away with it, but you never know what's gonna happen. 
Indiana could be a first quarter, fourth quarter team today. You never know. Indiana's played a lot of close games this year. A lot of games that they, it's really come down to the wire. And here's Debo. Debo over to Crouch. Skyler Kidd. Well, that was the opportunity for IU. They needed to score there. Not to say it's over, but that was a big opportunity to make it a two-goal game. And Nicola Tyner could not get it there for the Indiana Hoosiers, as Michigan has an opportunity to increase their lead to four. And just like that, a turnover, Indiana will gain possession. It's a big turnover there. Michigan had a chance to really put the game, turn the game on its head. And Indiana just turns the ball over just like that. I'm not sure what even happened there. It seemed like I saw someone in the blue zone, as I would say, but the ball just did not even land close to her. Well, they tried to play it through. They tried to get someone to go down low, close to the goal, but Michigan just swarmed in the middle, which we've seen them do in this second half already a good amount. And here are the Wolverines, and a save there by Mary Askew once again. That was very good defense down low from, I believe it was Nicole, Nicola Tyner. Didn't let Michigan get a good shot off and it was very easy for Askew in the end. And here's Alison Geist. Alison Geist will just lob it and it will hit the top right corner of the post. We've seen bar down, that was bar up. There it is again. Can't get the ball down low. We saw IU do it in the first half, but those lanes have closed up. Michigan has really turned on the heat in that area. And a Hail Mary pass. Michigan saved by Askew again. This game would be out of hand if it wasn't for Mary Askew. Well, say what you want about the amount of goals given up. Mary Askew is keeping IU in the game. Mm -hmm. It's a really good shot here on the replay, but Askew goes down low to her right to make a very solid save. And a risky pass there. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't come up with any more words to describe it. IU simply cannot get the ball down low. And it seems that they keep trying that same tactic and it really isn't improving for them at all. And as this match winds down to the four minute mark, it seems like it's getting a little out of hand here as Michigan is running away with this one. Well, Gabe, it was interesting coming in. I mentioned that Michigan was so good in the first, a great save there, so good in the first quarter of games on offense. It didn't happen there. They had a slow first quarter, but that really shows you how good a team can be if they can get away from their game plan and still succeed. And Sammy Monroe will just take the ball from the goal walking into there like it's her own territory. Here are the Wolverines, great defense there. Ask you should push this ball up right now. You have to take some chances right now to get this game to a closer score. And there it is on a great pass. There's Tyner over in the bright corner. Over, hits the post again, rebound, goal there to trim the deficit to just two. And will we see a late match comeback for the Hoosiers? Sophia Soli takes advantage of that right crossbar. 
This time hits the crossbar but goes in the goal. And now it's lockdown time for IU. You cannot allow Michigan to simply get to the goal easily. And with two minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the game, in the match, excuse me, Michigan leads by two as another save by Mary Askew. One of her best saves this game. Unbelievable, she has just been a lockdown brick wall this match. The passion and the spirit of both these teams are on full display here. Both these teams want this win so badly and IU is putting in a great effort to try to get back in it. And if anything's gonna spark some momentum, that'll do it as Indiana trims the, their deficit to just one with just over two minutes remaining. It's those saves from Mary Askew that spark the offense. Well, Michigan's gonna wanna use a lot of this shot clock. Another save. I mean, what else is new? If Indiana takes this one, I think I am confident to say that Mary Askew is the MVP of this match. Without a doubt. Unless Sophia Soli scores this next goal, Mary Askew has, the, has been the spotlight for this match. And here comes the high pressure defense from the Hoosiers. We saw it work well in the first. And there it is. The time the Hoosiers have been waiting for. Down one, Hoosiers possession. Mary Askew throws it down. She finds Tyner. Tyner should feed the hot hand as an unfortunate miss there. And I was out of my seat for that one. As Indiana has possession here, looking to bring this game to a tie. Pretty aggressive foul there by Michigan. Sort of trying to set the tone for the next minute 08. And as the clock winds down, we do not see a stop here. Indiana moving it around. And a foul is called on Indiana, an unfortunate event there as Michigan will have possession here with just 52 seconds remaining. And here is when it gets interesting, Zeke. IU did not look comfortable in that possession at all. With no shot clock, Michigan could just wind this clock down. And a Wolverine comes out of nowhere, but saved there by Mary Askew. And here it is with 26 seconds remaining. Will Indiana get their opportunity they've been looking for? No shot clock, they gotta move. Here's Mary Askew all the way up towards the opponent's goal. Gotta get a man up somehow. Askew, 12 seconds. Crouch, solely, and saved there by Alex Brown, and that will do it here in Bloomington, Indiana. A very, very close match here as Michigan takes this one nine to eight, improving their record to 18, excuse me, 19 and nine, while Indiana has now a record of 15 and 12.